Everyone has Mars on their mind these days. NASA wants to send humans to the Red Planet by 2030, and SpaceX wants to get there even sooner, with plans to have people there by 2024. Still, most of them aren't addressing the most critical questions. How will we survive long term once we get there? The atmosphere of Mars is mostly carbon dioxide. The surface of the planet is too cold to sustain human life, and the planet's gravity is a mere 38% of Earth's. Plus, the atmosphere on Mars is equivalent to about 1% of the Earth's atmosphere at sea level. That makes getting to the surface tricky. So in this video, we'll tell you about how humans will survive on Mars. So watch the video till the end. Before starting, like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such videos. And now, let's get started. Mars has captured the imagination of humans for decades, and these plans are just the next step in getting the Mars mission from the drawing room floor to a funded mission with a launch date. NASA isn't the only one with their eyes on Mars. Others are already coming up with their plans for the Red Planet. What we know about Mars is that it is a 180-day journey away and a possible target for a future human colony. And this isn't merely science fiction. The space race has already begun. Reaching the Red Planet will require some serious hardware. NASA will use its new heavy lift rocket, the Space Launch System, SLS, to propel Orion, the new generation of spacecraft, into space. The SLS is more powerful than any previous rocket, firing over 8.4 million pounds of thrust, equal to 135 Boeing 747s. The computers running the software on Orion have the ability to handle 480 million instructions per second. Now the question is how humans will survive on Mars. To answer that humans will need self-sustaining water, food, and oxygen to survive on Mars. Extracting water locked up in ice will be crucial, but after the recent discovery of flowing water on Mars, it may not be too difficult. NASA is also developing an excavator device called RASSR, Regolith Advanced Surface Systems Operations Robot, designed to mine water, ice, and fuel from planetary soil. Mars One also plans to send a water extractor to heat the soil until the water evaporates. The water will then be condensed and stored, the dry soil expelled, and the process repeated. Mars One claims its astronauts will have 50 liters of recyclable water every day. Food will need to be grown and harvested, but farming in space isn't easy. You can't plunk crops into the earth and sprinkle on water, because in microgravity free soil and water will fly around and foul the interior of the spacecraft, warns Dieter Annalisa Paul, an expert in molecular and cellular biology at the University of Florida. Special growing systems will be required, such as VEGGIE, the Vegetable Production System Project, a microwave-sized chamber in which plants receive carbon dioxide and controlled release fertilizer, and fans stir the air, heavy gases sink, and light ones rise on Earth. But in space, this doesn't happen. Food might also be printed. NASA is working with Systems and Material Research Corporation, SMRC, to develop a 3D printer to mold protein, starch, and fat into shapes, and microjet in flavors and nutrients. David G. Irvin, director of SMRC, predicts there will be 25 to 50 basic food items, including bread and pastries. We're not trying for out-of-this-world designs, Irvin says. The food shape will be practical to guarantee even cooking and efficient processing times. So pizza will look like pizza and biscuits like biscuits. We're not planning for Michelin star food, just healthy and nutritious meals. At Mars One, meanwhile, it's been suggested that the colonists might recycle human waste to provide nutrients for their crops, and their diet might include insects and alga. Plants might be used to produce oxygen as well. Dart Paul claims a bank of photosynthetic organisms, such as green alga, could be used for this task. NASA also plans to convert the carbon dioxide that dominates the thin Martian air into oxygen using MOXIE, a machine able to produce three-quarters of an ounce of oxygen an hour. If successful, a bigger device will launch two years before astronauts land on Mars to produce oxygen for human respiration and rocket fuel. Our bodies work differently in space, even the way our blood flows. On Earth, gravity drags bodily fluids downwards, but in space, this doesn't happen. So the heart has to work harder to pump out more blood 
and more fluids accumulate in the head, putting extra pressure on the eyes. Russian cosmonauts place their bodies in low-pressure boxes to draw blood into the legs and wear bracelets around their thighs and upper arms, so blood accumulates in the veins of the limbs. NASA is currently testing the effectiveness of this. Astronauts on ISS do two hours of daily aerobic, resistance, and treadmill exercises to stave off the effects of weightlessness, which causes rapid bone and muscle wastage. Professor Norsk says the same countermeasure will be used on Mars, which has roughly one-third of the gravity of Earth. Using the osteoporosis drug bisphosphonate to prevent bone mass loss is another option, and artificial gravity is being tested using a centrifuge spinning device. Diet will also be important, and scientists are looking at foods that protect bone health and are rich in antioxidants to boost immunity. Space plays havoc with the immune system. Blood plasma samples taken from astronauts before and after a voyage show that some cells fail to kick in when needed, awakening latent viruses such as chickenpox, while others are overactive and cause allergy symptoms. As well as physical challenges, the isolation, confinement, and loss of privacy associated with long-duration space travel can provoke mental health problems such as depression. The technical trials of reaching and inhabiting Mars are immense, but perhaps the greatest challenge is the threat posed by radiation. Astronauts who travel beyond low Earth orbit or outside the protective shield of Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field, exposing them to galactic cosmic rays that damage DNA and increase cancer risk. NASA prohibits its astronauts from increasing their probability of dying from cancer by more than 3%, but at least one expert has estimated that exposure to radiation on Mars could cut 15 to 24 years off an astronaut's life. So far, the plan is to shield space vehicles and habitats to protect the humans inside. Orion has radiation sensors and will use the mass already on board to maximize the amount of material, including equipment, supplies, launch, and re-entry seats that can be placed between the crew and the outside environment. The Mars One living quarters will be covered with 16 feet of soil to shield the inhabitants from cosmic rays. Their scientists say this will provide the same protection as the Earth's atmosphere. Experts divide these benefits into practical and aspirational. Practical benefits are economical, educational, and political. Space travel stimulates the aerospace industry and entices people into careers in science and engineering. Aspirational rationales, meanwhile, are described as a shared human destiny and urge to explore. And ultimately, landing on Mars might be more aspirational than practical. While a human landing might happen in 35 to 50 years' time, an entire self-sustaining colony could take centuries. And that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then subscribe to our channel to never miss our future uploads.